And welcome back to High School Sports Extra presented by Nicolet National Bank. After three weeks of play, three teams are left unbeaten atop the Bay Conference standings, but only one of them is 3-0, and that's West Appear. Joining me now to talk about that is the head coach of the Phantoms, Jack Batten. Jack, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me, Ryan. 10-2 and two season a year ago to level three of the playoffs. A successful year, no doubt, but every year is different. When you came into camp this year and now you're through three games, what did you think about your team coming in and what have you found out through three weeks? Anything surprising so far or is it about what you thought? Uh, we have some really high expectations for this season. We have a, a ton of returning kids. Uh, every year you have a few kids that surprise you. This year has been no different. Uh, the expectation was set at last year's banquet. We'd like to make it down to Mattis again if we could. Uh, so that's kind of what we've been driving towards. And, uh, you know, when you have those kids returning, how much easier is that when you have the, the kids that have been through the battles with you and you, and you have the expectations like that? Because at some point, you leave it to those kids, don't you, to say, you guys lead the way to this? Yeah, at some point, their experience is invaluable. Uh, a kid like Josh Blount uh, was really raw in terms of his fundamentals, quarterbacking. Uh, this year, we start at a different position. Uh, he's much more polished. You know, we have... Uh, some inexperience yet at our skill skill positions. We have a ton of sophomores that are playing, but offense and defensive linemen, uh, they're ready to go, and uh, that kind of what makes your team. That's right. Games are won and lost in the trenches, no doubt. Let's take a look at your game against Green Bay West. Last night, the Wildcats looking to turn their program around under new head coach John Saharski to help, of course, get them going. But last night, it was all phantom. Sophomore quarterback Josh Blount, as you mentioned, he gets them going, throwing the short pass early on to Aaron Wagner, and Wagner looks like a guy that you get the ball in space and he does the rest, right? Right. One of the things we wanted to concentrate on from the previous week was our wide receiver blocking, and kids did a good job in practice this week. That's kind of what that set that play up. And we'll talk a little bit more about Blount because he's, like you said, still a young guy, but a very versatile weapon at quarterback. Not only can he throw the ball, he can run it as well. Where have you seen him develop? I mean, you talked about just a little bit more polish, but you really can't simulate these game reps that he's getting at a young age. Making reads, just simple things, high carriage with the football, footwork. Uh, typically, when his feet are good, his passes are good. Uh, he's, a, he's a much better quarterback this year in terms of fundamentals. Uh, and there's some more things that we can do offensively with him. So sky's the limit. You see a great touch pass there, letting his receiver come back and make the play. And this one's going to be capped off a 28-point first quarter, capped off by Cody Cavill. Now, he's one of those guys, you look at him in his pads in another division, you know, he might be an offensive lineman. He looks like a big kid. Uh, is he one of those guys that gives you a little bit of a bruising element? I mean, he can break away, too. We've seen him do that in the past, too. But he's a guy that's going to move the chains, it looks like. Yeah, he's a downhill kid. He's a 4'7", 4'8", 40. 200 pound athlete uh, he hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities he hasn't reached double digit uh, carries yet in the game I think he's averaging about 14 15 yards per carry so oh. we've kind of tried to save him a little bit uh, but no doubt we'll turn him loose uh, in the not too distant future at the end of the day it's a 63 nothing win and as we look at some of your games from earlier this year so far it's three games and three shutouts uh, yesterday, by the way, I have to mention, negative 86 yards the Wildcats were held to. So far, you're outscoring opponents 140 to nothing. I know you're going to have tougher games to come down the, the pike here in a little bit, but is it one of those things where when you start off so good like this that you kind of have to talk to guys about handling success because handling success, as we hear from coaches all the time, is just as tough as adversity. It's easier to coach kids after you've won. Uh, there's faith, there's trust. Uh, we push, we're demanding, and uh, right now they trust the things that we're saying. Trust me, there are tons of things that we need to get better at, and they understand that. All right, and uh, one of the guys we haven't discussed yet is a guy who does a lot of the work in the trenches, may not make the highlights all the time, but he's a future Iowa Hawkeye, Jake Karchinski. Now, I met up with you two this summer after he committed to Iowa. For those that don't know Jake or haven't seen him play, what kind of impact does he uh, give you on both sides of the ball, and how does he translate to the next level, do you think? He's playing much better with his hands this year. He's a, a faster, quicker athlete. Uh, he's been able to get to the football real well. Uh, we typically rush three guys. He's been able to mount pressure with the three-man pass rush. Uh, between him and uh, Kerry Kodanko, uh, who's probably our top offensive lineman, they've done a good job in the, in the trenches. He gives you a little bit as a tight end, too. Yeah, not a bad pass catcher either. Six <laughs> foot six isn't too tough to throw That's to. That's right. And there's another bookend one on the other side in Billy Wyatt. We so. saw him yeah. on, in the earlier highlight. Yeah. That's a pair of towers that I don't think other teams are going to be looking forward to tackling a whole lot. Well, uh, 
you know, you're going to go through the ringer here in a little bit. The schedule does get tougher. The meat of the schedule is coming up. A stretch of three straight against two and one teams, starting with a non-conference clash against Luxembourg. Casco, this is a team, who knows, you could see in the playoffs. So a good, good test here uh, in non-conference next week. Exactly. Always a good physical football team. Coach Manny does a good job. Uh, they're a little bit more wide open this year, two by two and three by one. And they've, their quarterback's back, number 17 last year, torched us for a couple touchdowns. So, yeah, we'll have our hands full this week. And the next three after that, then, will likely determine the Bay Conference championship in all likelihood at home against two and one Xavier, then on the road for some tough games, 10th ring Seymour. Then it's a matchup with the Menasha. And since the Blue Jays have joined the Bay Conference, Jack, they've claimed at least a share of the Bay title in three of the four years. So, the Blue Jays, that's probably a game that you circle every year and say, you know, if we want to win the title, probably going to have to beat that team. In your preparation preseason, you surely look at all those things. Once the season gets going, uh, it's week-by-week -week basis, and right now everything is geared towards beating luxembourg Casco. Menasha will come in the future. All right, should be a fun end of the season. He is Jack Batten, the head coach of West Pier Football. Jack, thank you so much for stopping by. And, I appreciate uh, you having me. Best of luck the rest of the way. Yeah. All right, when we come back on High School Sports Extra, we have a big finish here with the Local 5 Top 5 Plays and the Team of the Week, so keep it here.